y'all. Um, today we're going to go see a friend of mine, and his name is Smiley, and he um, is from Nashville, and so am I, of course, so we have a lot in common, and um, he's a guy that um, has, of course, been in the music industry all of his life, you know, most of us folks from Nashville dabble in the music industry, and so, uh, of course, um, we also like to sit around and talk about our hometown, so anyway, today, or right now, I'm going to go over to see Smiley, and um, y'all are going to love him. Bye. There's so many of these in here. Yeah. Your whole place is filled up. Right there. That's the cash box award for the Wilburn Brothers. Hey, y'all. This is my buddy, <laughs> Smiley. Howdy. <laughs> and, um, well, we're both from Nashville. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, this is just an interview with my buddy, Smiley. He's also from Nashville. And, um... He, uh, well, he can explain his music industry stuff. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> what do you think about the music industry now? Well, there's a lot of change in it right now compared to what we were used to years ago. It's like I had someone not too long back come to me and says, what if... Uh, Might need to turn the radio down. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on just a second. We're turning down the radio. <laughs> Here's Smiley again. Here we go. But We're someone, talking about Nashville. Someone was asking me if Hank Williams Sr. was to go downtown trying to get a record deal. <laughs> you know, how would it work? So I, I said, well, it's completely different now. The times have changed, but what it is is you've got to look at the young people, how their motivation is for music. And then the thing that's hurt really the music industry in my book, though, is for songwriters and is is on their end where everything you can go online and get their music and there's so many CDs that are out there where yes they got that one great hit that's out there and but there's like two or three others that might be on that CD that people never hear that could actually be a number one and it would sell more of the product itself and you know it's sad when you go to trying to find a record store around I mean we've got the Ernest Tub it's about the last one left around here and but trying to find something it's sometimes impossible and I've had people call me from different places, from Germany and this and that, that I've met during uh, shows that we've done downtown and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, and they're asking me, well, how can I get a hold of this one with Johnny Cash or get a hold of this one with Merle Haggard and this and that. And then when you try to find them, sometimes you can, but there, there's a lot of them that have been done remakes and digitals and stuff. But like, so record stores are gone. Oh, yes. Record stores are gone, so it's all... Just Ernest Tubb is, is it. Well, there's another independent store called Grimey's down yeah. there. Um, but that's more... I mean, in, I don't know what's... I guess it's just the music industry is evolving into something different, which is digital, which is good for independent artists, though, you know, yeah. folks like me. Yes. Um, and... Um, I don't think we need record labels anymore, do you? No, not really. I think my thing is is the record labels now, it's gone down to putting in uh, nothing against college or nothing, but you're bringing in people that are from Michigan, you know, not nothing against states either, mm -hmm. but from the Michigan, the Wisconsin, this and that. And these kids are 21, 24 years old that really don't understand the industry other than the money in, but there's got to be more through just the industry than just money. It has to be tradition too. It has to be set forward and just kept on and on and on. But as it is right now, you know, it's a money thing where if you don't make it in a couple of years, they boot you out and that's the last year you see it. So that's when you end up 
either putting your own record label together and becoming an independent. So really the independent label is your best direction nowadays to really fulfill your obligations to go forward. And a lot of artists, uh, for instance, Terry Clark has put her own album, record albums mm -hmm. together and stuff. And she's doing phenomenal with it. So the thing about it is... She's got her own team. Her own team, exactly. Right. So it's a matter of finding those folks maybe to... Yeah. What it is, I mean, because, you, like, you know, I have my record. Hey, y'all. <laughs> We're Brett. back again. <laughs> <laughs> he likes my record. Definitely. <laughs> she has a lot of potential in this industry and stuff, and, and she doesn't have to wing on, on a wing of somebody else either, let's put it that way. <laughs> I won't mention no names. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, Anyway, what we're doing now is we're just like, you know, sitting around talking about Nashville and we're looking at all of these pictures in here and, um, you know, uh, Nashville, well, country music is about family traditions, really, and, um, you know, most of the songs and the people, at least the legendary people, are the folks that, you know, cherish that and, um, that's the thing is that if you can stand on your family traditions, then whether or not you make it or you don't, you know, right. it's still, it's, you know, it's something that you were able to give back for me anyway, you know, it's just something I'm able to do. It's just a creative spirit I have. It's keeping the stories alive. The stories, yeah. Instead of make-believe on some music, I, there's a lot of make-believe that's on it. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, music, makes money and good you have to start with the song yeah um and of course the song normally comes from a story or obviously somebody's idea that they put together so um yeah i love music it's just part of my life and uh, oh, it's definitely uh, been my life everybody loves music and that you know music it creates emotions and and you know it becomes part of your life it it's in your car it, it's um, at your prom. It's your first kiss. It's I mean, it's all oh, it talks it's all about around us, you know. But it's something that's intangible, you know. But it does deserve to have respect, and that deserves money, you know. So, um, yeah, they're the independent artist anyway, kind of one-stop shopping for right. us. So anyway, I'm gonna look around this place, y'all. <laughs> look, there's all kinds of stuff here. <laughs> Look, the Junction Jamboree. Look. Yeah, the Junction Jamboree. That's I worked with Kitty Wells back uh, probably about 20 years ago. I brought in a couple artists to open up for her down at a place called Mule Day in Columbia, Tennessee. Holy camoly, you worked with Kitty Wells? Yes, I worked out for a branch here and there. And me and her grandson are real good friends, John Sturdivant. Oh, wow. And that show right there that you're seeing, that was our first poster that we put together. And, That's pretty. And we didn't have that many artists available to go to that one, so we ended up changing it because Johnny had had hip surgery, so during that time we ended up redoing it, and so I was able to bring in these other artists, me and John. And, and so John, and we had see, Kitty we had Wells. Kitty Wells, Johnny Wright, Randy Coors, Lurk. Laurie White, BR549, Porter White. Oh, I'm, Laurie married my sister's ex-husband, Chuck Cannon. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's yeah. my ex-brother-in-law. Then we had the Whites, Fury, <laughs> and Tammy Sullivan, and Andy Griggs, Carter Brothers, Vasco Clemens, Dave Peterson, 1946. We had Sarah Evans. We had Donna Fargo. And uh, all the list went on and on. There was a lot of different ones that came in. But one band that I have a lot of respect for is like any time when it comes to benefits and stuff is BR549 have always been there and to worship any kind of benefit to help children or for a cause like this one was for Alzheimer's that we did. Now these older pictures here are from a, a, a photographer who who has taken all these pictures. This is my favorite right here. Yeah, <laughs> Dolly. Yep. But these older black and whites. I think I might need some bigger titties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this right here is, uh, most people don't know who that is. Now, can you figure out who that one is? Uh-uh. That is Jimmy Dickens. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. The Look, y'all. The actual photographer who 
who took these pictures, his best friend is one of my customers here in my business here also. And so that's Jimmy yeah. Dickens. Yeah, that's Jimmy Dickens. Good Lord. Then we got Randy Travis across the top, Eddie Raven. Up here? Yes. I can't get up there. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it up. <laughs> Did you get it? Can you see it? You see it's got some. Okay, we got Jimmy Dickens there, and then, then we have, uh, right there you got Randy Travis, and then we have Eddie Raven here. And this is an artist, great bluegrass artist. He's played a lot with, well, Dirk Bentley's first album, he played Dobro on that and everything. He's a phenomenal I artist. I love Dobro. Randy Coors, and he's won a, quite a few awards for his Dobro playing. And then a, uh, and then a, a great, I got a, I got a uh, great writer here and a good friend. Beth Nelson Beth, Chapman. Beth Nelson Chapman. Oh, she's a phenomenal rider. Lost and deceased, but a great guy, Mr. Billy Walker. Billy Walker. And this one you probably saw a lot of times on Channel 4 and stuff on the Today Show, Ralph Emery. Her name was Darlene Austin. Uh-huh, Darlene. And my good buddy, Charlie Pride. What Charlie a, Pride, he's sweet. You know yeah, him? What a great guy. If it wasn't for him, Neil McCoy wouldn't be Entertainer of the Year because he ended up putting Neil McCoy where he's at. Oh, how beautiful. And then we had the Kenleys, which was a great little duet, girls and... Miss Trisha, you're you know, here. Trisha, she had a bunch of my sister's hits. And Buddy Jill, great writer too, and also entertainer. Mr. Tracy Lawrence, we never be getting Mr. Tracy Lawrence. <laughs> a little attitude, but great guy. Attitude. <laughs> Martina McBride. You know, that's a voice right there. And Miss Dina Carter. There's Dina, she sang my sister's song. And then you got Toby Key, great, Toby another Key. great guy, and one of the phenomenal artists, B.J. Thomas. Huh. And then another buddy of mine, Aaron Tiffin. Aaron Tiffin. Marty Stewart. Marty with the hair. This was a great kid who could do some Roy Orbison music to no end. Really? And Jason Pitts. Huh. And he's actually a Vanderbilt professor. Get out of here. And then the, one of the great <laughs> that, I, that I got to meet and work with is Eric Clapton one time. Wow. And uh, I forget the name of the band here, but John Sturdivant is the guy, the second to the to the uh, from the left there, that's uh -huh. Mr. John Sturdivant, which is Kitty Wells' grandson. Uh huh. And then of course Miss Patty Loveless. Patty. And this is a phenomenal, great artist that does a lot of '60s and '70s. You can see him downtown, Mr. Bart Hansen. Bart Hansen. And this is an older picture. Now I couldn't tell you who the artist are. I forgot, but uh, someone pretty. out there knows. But they they date back probably the '30s and '40s. Uh huh. And then Miss Kelly Foxton, she was Miss USA, and I mean me, Miss USO, excuse me. Oh wow! And then we got the governor, who stood behind me a lot of times, uh, helping me get shows put out there through the state. Yeah. And a great bunch of guys, the Emerson Drive, and the Judds. <laughs> what a battling couple there. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, Clayton. Clayton Claxton? Claxton. Yeah, he was. He was pretty. Not, he goes back to the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And then you got Paul Brandt, Rich Lloyd, who was a writer and singer, a little playboy. And Lee Gibson, who's really not got no recognition in this state, but he's, he's a boy from around, I believe it was North Carolina, but I like his stuff. Then we have Reba. I mean, lots of Reba. I guess you could tell me and her good good friends and stuff. And this this is her and the baby, which the baby's now grown up and the entertainer itself. And the the phenomenal Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. Now these pictures here, I actually found them at a thrift store, mm -hmm. and I caught my eye, so I went and got them. That's cool. But more Reba, 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 and another girl, Marilyn Jeffries, who was a writer. And then I'll just show this picture and let people figure out who it is. Great artist, though. <laughs> then there's Brad. Many times in my life When I was down 